Hello, today I thought I would talk about a NICAD and nickel metal hydride rechargeable battery analyzer that I've had for a few years. This is the Maha Energy, M-A-H-A -A Energy, Wizard One Power X battery charger and conditioner. This is from Maha Energy of Taiwan. It's the MHC9000 Wizard One charger analyzer. This is a charger and analyzer for AA and AAA sized rechargeable batteries, specifically for nickel cadmium and nickel metal hydride rechargeable battery cells. This is a really interesting instrument for anyone that is serious about using rechargeable cells. This is important because this not only can charge cells, it can discharge them, it can cycle them, it can break them in, and it can tell you what the capacity is of every cell individually. So this is a really handy piece of equipment for anybody that uses rechargeable cells frequently. First of all, it is an intelligent charger. By intelligent, I mean that this will apply a voltage to the cell to charge it. Actually, specifically, it will apply a constant current to the, ch to the cell to charge it. And it has a delta V charge circuit that detects the, the, when the battery is fully charged based on its rise in voltage. There's many good videos out there already that talk about uh, the voltage across a, a NICAD cell as it's charging. Uh, Dave Jones from the EEV blog, if you watch Dave Jones, he's one of his earlier videos is, is fantastic about nickel, nickel cadmium, nickel metal hydride rechargeable cells and how to properly charge them. So if you want to take a look at uh, the EEV blog video on NICAD cells, it's very informative and it'll help you a lot to understand what this machine can do. Anyways, so this, based on the voltage measurements that it takes periodically, detects exactly when each cell is fully charged and it shuts off the charging circuit once each cell is charged. The next function that, is, that I use most is the refresh analyze function of this device. The refresh analog excuse me, the refresh analyze function does a couple of things. First of all, it charges the cell, then it discharges the cell to 0.9 volts, and then it recharges the cell. So when you're done, you have a freshly charged cell, it's been cycled, and when it's done, it'll tell you what the capacity is of that cell. So on the discharge cycle, it measures the capacity at 0.9 volts to let you know what the actual capacity of that cell is under the conditions that you've established with this device. So this example cell is a 700 milliamp hour nickel cadmium cell. If you pop this in here and run it through a refresh analyze cycle, it'll tell you what its capacity actually is. This is an older cell, so most likely it will not quite be 700 milliamp hours. So if you have, if you have several cells that you're using in a battery pack, you can put them in here individually uh, this does not connect to battery packs directly. It only connects to individual cells. But if you put the cells in individually, it'll tell you the capacity of each individual cell. So if you have a weak cell in a battery pack, you can find that cell and replace it. It also has what's called a break-in function. So for new batteries, for new cells that have not been charged or discharged recently, you can pop it in here and it charges them at a 0.1C 16-hour rate discharges them, and then recharges them, like the, the uh, refresh analyze, but it's at, at lower current levels. It has just a plain discharge cycle, so if you want to know what the remaining capacity is of any given cell, you can pop it in here, put it on the discharge cycle, and it'll tell you. The last function is just a plain cycle, and that's like a refresh analyze that repeats for however many cycles you tell it. So if you want to cycle a battery, charge it, discharge it, charge it, discharge it several times, you can set that up in this device. The other thing that makes this device intelligent is that for all those functions, you can tell it what charge rate and discharge rate you want to use in milliamp hours, excuse me, in milliamps current. So if you want to charge a battery at exactly 200 milliamps, for instance, you can pop it in here and set it for 200 milliamps. It just does this in steps of 100. So you can do 200, 300, 400, for instance. But that's a very handy tool. So it makes this device usable amongst a wide variety, a wide range of capacity of cells. 
So this device works on small AAAs, even up through high capacity AA's. Now, this case only fits AAA and AA cells. But if you're wondering, well, what about C cells and D cells? Well, that was the first thought I had with this device. I like everything about this device, except its inability to take C and D cells. But in the next video, I'll show you how I took care of that situation. In the next video, I'll talk about an adapter that I made that allows you to use C and D cells with this device. The electric circuitry is capable of charging and discharging C and D cells. It's just that the case can't physically accept C's and D's. This charger is powered off from the included 12 volt wall wart transformer, or because it uses a standard 12 volt DC uh, voltage, you can, you can power it off from any other 12 volt source that's handy that can supply at least two amps. So I have used this thing in my car with a, just a regular cigarette cord plugged into the cigarette lighter. As long as the cord has the appropriate uh, standard deep coaxial DC connector with the right polarity, the center pin is positive, so that's uh, more common than not. This device will work. So you can actually run this device off from a 12 volt battery, off from a car cord, or off from the included wall wart charger. Whatever works for you. So that might be applicable to, uh, say, ham radio operators working in, uh, working in, in the field or in uh, mobile portable situations where you want to charge your, your AAA and AA cells. This will work just fine as long as you have a 12 volt power source. So with all that being said, let's hook this up and uh, try it out on a few cells to see how it works. The first thing the instruction manual describes is how to insert the cells. When you're using AA cells, you put the top end in first and then snap in the bottom end. For AAA cells, you do just the opposite. You push the bottom end in first and snap the top in. As soon as you put a cell in, this will detect that a cell has been inserted and it asks you what mode you'd like to use. So we'll just take a AA cell and in this case, let's do a refresh analyze. So I'll go down to refresh analyze, press enter. Now it's asking for the charge rate. I won't go into great detail about what, how to choose a charge and discharge rate in this video, but I do suggest that you go out on the internet, do some research, and uh, study this for yourself. Now, if you, after a certain period of time, it'll automatically uh, choose 1,000 as the default charge rate. But I, don't, I don't want that, so let's take the cell back out and put it back in. Let's do a refresh analyze, and I want a charge rate of 400 milliamps. Now it's ready for the discharge rate. I want a discharge rate of 200 in this case. We'll press enter. The first thing this charger does when you insert a cell is it checks the impedance of the cell. This is just a quick check to make sure that you did not insert a non-rechargeable cell. So let's make sure that you've inserted the proper cell and there isn't anything wrong with the cell. This cell passed the impedance test and it's now charging. The screen continuously cycles through several different displays. The first is the total capacity that, that has been charged up to this point. The second is the charging current, which it'll show you here, 394. I entered 400, but the closest that it could go was 394, so that's what it displays. The third option that it displays is how long the battery has been on that cycle. The last option is what the current voltage is of that cell. So right now I have a partially charged cell that's floating at 1.32 volts. As, this, as the cell charges, that number will rise, obviously, and the internal circuitry detects when that voltage rises and just starts to fall. As soon as that voltage starts to fall, the cell is fully charged and it'll stop charging. On the refresh analyze cycle, as soon as the cell is done charging, the charge circuit shuts off and then it waits two hours just to let the cell settle. Then it discharges the cell until it reaches 0.9 volts, waits two more hours, and then recharges the cell using the same method. Now let's take this cell out and try a AAA cell. I mentioned that this does an impedance check on the cell as soon as you insert a cell. And for most cells, that works just fine. Uh, that does eliminate alkaline cells, which you shouldn't be charging in here anyways. And unfortunately, sometimes these real low capacity cells 
like this one is 320 milliamp hours. Um, sometimes if this cell, unless it's fully discharged, it will fail the impedance test. So let's check that right now. I'll just do a charge of, the lowest charge rate you can do is 200 milliamps. So let's do a charge of 200 and let's see if it passes the impedance test or not. I can tell you already, it's showing 2.22 volts on the impedance test and it says high. So this cell, before I can charge it or refresh it, I have to discharge it. Now you can discharge any cell you want in here, it doesn't matter what it is. So let's go to discharge, enter a low discharge current. The lowest you can enter is 100 milliamps and hit enter. So this will discharge any cell without doing any test because uh, you can, discharging an alkaline cell does not prevent a safety hazard like charging does. Once that cell is discharged, then I can take it out, put it back in, and do a charge or a refresh or a break in, and it'll work just fine. And that's all there is to using the Maha Energy PowerWorks Wizard 1 CH9000, MHC9000, there we go, charger analyzer. Very handy device for anybody that's serious about using rechargeable cells. Hope you enjoyed, and stay tuned for the second video where I show you how to use C and D cells in here.